So, let's get into the program. The first speaker is Mark. There he is. Uh, Mark held various technical management roles. He was the co-founder of Graphite Systems. He was president of Heavenstone, um, where you did some strategic management and technology consulting. Um, and since 2020, you are the CTO of Risk Five International, and you will present in your capacity and give us an update about the technical advancements of the last month. Thank you. Great. Um, let me grab the clicker. Um, I'm more of a walker, so uh, I'm going to you know, get down here, walk around a little bit. Uh, so f first of all, uh, June 1st was my three-year anniversary, and if anybody told me uh, what an incredible ride this would have been, I just really would not have believed them. Uh, it, it's just astounding. So um, I'm very grateful. Um, I, I want to, you know, I have 15 minutes. <laughs> I have 34 slides. Krista couldn't make it. He sends his apologies. He gave me slides on top of my slides. I'm going to go through what I, I feel is uh, the most important things, but I'm going to do the ask up front. The ask is two things. One is get involved. I've had people come over to me and say, I'm kind of scared to get involved. I'm afraid that I'm, you know, not, you know, smart enough to get involved or I don't have the right questions. There's no dumb questions. Get involved. The only way this gets better is if we do this as a community. So please join the task groups, join the SIGs. This is how things get done. This is how things get done well. Um, ever have any questions at all on the technical stuff, you can even send me email, mark, M-A-R-K, at riskv.org, or help at riskv.org. We'll glad, be glad to help you, and we're very inviting. We say that at the beginning of every, every meeting. Uh, how many of you have seen me do the intro for all the meetings? Uh, raise your hands. Uh, it's kind of annoying to see myself at 7 a.m. every day, uh, but <laughs> uh, we, we do that. The second thing is we have a program called Development Partners uh, where we uh, have some combination of students, professors, and professionals help us go and get things ratified. Uh, we're building the contributor culture and this Development Partner program helps do it. Most of it is in Asia right now, so we have China Academy of Sciences doing a great job, IIT Madras, uh, some individual companies. Uh, we're very grateful. We don't have a European development partner. Please uh, think about this. If, if you're associated with the university, I mean, how many times in your lifetime has an ISA been created from scratch that you can get involved with? This is a great opportunity, so please. That's my ask. I'm going to get, get going with, the, with, with the, the story. So we're going to talk about you know, where we're going and a little bit of what we've done. Um, so I'll skip this. And I'm going to move quickly because I do have a limited amount of time. Um, Calista went through this. I think the word inevitable is amazing. Every day I wake up and I see some product that I didn't know was being developed for Risk Five. It's just astounding. And so I get very excited. I mean, everything from you know, hearing aids and canes to uh, HPC and you know, literally 1,000 processors on a die kind of, kind of thing. So uh, it's, it just runs the, the, the gamut. And we're going to talk a little bit about the software ecosystem uh, and processors. There have been tens of billions of cores. Uh, we, we don't require reporting. Uh, but, you know, we reported 10 billion cores in 2021. Here we are in 2023. You can do the math. Um, so one of the big questions is, are we open source or open standard? We are an open standard. Think of us as Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. The ISA is the contract between software and hardware. It is the protocol between hardware and software. Uh, we're the ones who put the specification out for it. Not only do we do specifications for the ISA, but we do specifications for um, non-ISA things like IOMMU. So this, this you know, hardware-software boundary that everybody needs in order to get you know, their systems out and their implementations out. Um, and we, we don't do reference implementations. We, we don't want to play favorites. We, we really or do, we just work on specs. We have great partners, including one of the sponsors here, Open Hardware, that, that does that open source. There's you know, low risk. There's the rocket stuff. 
uh, there, there's Chips Alliance, there's, there's huge amounts of open source stuff out there. We support them, we work with them, we're very excited about it, but we really concentrate on, on this. And, um, it, you know, in order to do RISC-V, you actually have to do an implementation. We encourage that. We encourage differentiation. You can go ahead and, you know, do custom instructions. We have a reserve space for uh, folks to make custom instructions. Often those custom instructions sediment in to the RISC-V standard. Uh, this year, one of them is conditional ops. So uh, done by Ventana, and we're very grateful for them, and they brought it in and said, look, this, this needs to be in here. Everybody agreed. Uh, next year, you're gonna see that same stuff end up in 16-bit space, which is all, also very exciting. Uh, so why do you use RISC-V? Um, I'll go quickly through this. The number one thing is flexibility. I, I mean, that is absolutely number one. You can do whatever you want, right? We have people in, um, you, know, you know, doing earbuds, you know, shipping probably a billion a year at this point. They don't come to a meeting. They use the instructions they care about. They bound it in with their SOC, and it's very exciting. Um, and you can do that. There are other people who are working very closely with us, and they go specifically with whatever the standards are because they want interoperability with software. But if you're you know, running an earbud, you got one application, right? And you're not worried about running general purpose computing. Um, obviously, cost. Uh, the ecosystem, we heard about RISE, we, we're, we're doing a bunch of stuff, so anything that is needed in order to get ratification, RVI is, is helping make happen, so the, the basic compiler work, you know, the basic operating system work, uh, et cetera, uh, you know, we make sure that that happens. We want to make sure there's enough stuff there when you go out for public review that you can kick the tires. That's really important. Um, you know, our position in history, we, we, we benefit from Linux. Linux kind of built this community model that we stand on the shoulders of. We have, you know, uh, benefited from, you know, all the architectures that came before us. Uh, there, there aren't very many people working on RISC-V who haven't worked on another architecture, right? So we get to benefit from what they've learned and what they bring to, to the story. The EDA renaissance, I mean, what's going on in the last 15 years around modularity, chiplets, et cetera, just makes it possible for RISC-V to show up in lots of places. You know, 10 cores on an NVIDIA board, or, you know, as, as the, um, the, the Qualcomm folks told us at, at, at the December summit, you know, they've been <laughs> they quietly shipped 650 million cores in Snapdragon. So if you got a cell phone, likely you're running something running RISC-V. Um, and then, the last thing is hard to quantify is pride of ownership. Uh, this is our house, right? This is just like Linux. You know, the reason, you know, look, Linux is, is not the best operating system on earth, but it keeps getting better, and we own it as a community, and that's why everybody's excited about using it. And if you don't like something in it, you can help make it better. That's the same thing with RISC-V. It was built in the community. It wasn't, you know, uh, given whole cloth to open source. Uh, there have been other architectures that have done that. This was built by us. This is our house. If you don't like it, help make it better, right? You have that opportunity. It's a very exciting opportunity, and I think that it, this is hard to quantify, right? Um, this is, uh, you know, look, there, there's all, you know, the sort of the separation of, of functions and you can see here, you know, the NVIDIA uh, Tegra SOC and pieces that have gone over to RISC-V. Um, you, you know, there was a, a, um, an article uh, about tectonic shifts in the industry, about people doing this over and over again. There's opportunities all over, right? You can take a look at this list and everything that's on here, people are working on with RISC-V. Um, and, you know, people talk about fragmentation. Uh, we like to talk about unification. Uh, and we give people the opportunity to be diverse about what their applications are and so on and so forth. And the, the, the reason we're a community at all is that we get to share the burden. In today's world, it's too expensive for even like the, the big multinational companies that have so much you know, power to go ahead and make 
uh, you know, an ISA successful. We have to do this together. We share the work of defining the ISA. We share the work of defining the hardware software interface around, you know, uh, uh, various pieces of, of, you know, platforms and so on and so forth. Uh, and we share the software, you know, burden. And so it's everything from boot code all the way up to applications. Um, and look, <laughs> no one wants vendor lock-in, right? I mean, this is really very clear. Um, you know, this is the point I made on the previous slide, uh, so I'm going to keep going here. Uh, and now I want to talk a little bit about portability. So why do we care about portability? We care about portability because that, so I got five minutes here, so uh, you're not going to see very much of this. Uh, but the reason why you care about portability is because that's how you make a software economy. The way application vendors make money is because they don't have to go ahead and support 10 different implementations. They only have to go to one, and it works everywhere. That's the way that system software has portability. And so what we've done is we've defined profiles and we've defined platforms. Last year, profiles are most important. We got them ratified in March. It, it was over a two-year effort. And next year, the goal is in 2024 to have platforms. So I'm going to skip this and just go to the nice little pictures here. So uh, we have a thing called bases. It's all the base instructions. Um, and, you know, there is a uh, sort of a... a a, uh, a, a profile that's based on that, that all it has are the base instructions. Uh, and then it, er, everything from RVA 20 was uh, ratified in, in 2019. You can see the things that are on there. RVA 22 is everything that was ratified in, um, in 2021. Um, uh, um, and we're coming up with public names. They're not there yet. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, the goal is that we'll tell people, look, this public name, you know, call it foo, whatever, uh, is coming, uh, and we'll go, go towards that. RVA 23 is being worked on right now. It's being defined. It's not final yet. Um, there is a spec out there for you to take a look at. Uh, and then uh, future things include things like Android features. We're working with uh, Google, and they're putting requirements together. We want to make sure that we do this right because these things last for 10 years. And there will be a name, too. So we're going to be telling everybody, hey, name two is coming. Go towards name two. That's the profile that you should use. And it will actually, everything between the two major uh, releases, public name one, public name two, uh, will be uh, included in that profile. So things like vector and vector crypto uh, all will show up there. And then in the future, we have uh, more profile types. So we have families of profiles. The first one is targeted at, at more application processors, so general purpose computing. Um, but there's a whole bunch of things that are going on here. Uh, some things of note here, 64-bit instructions are coming. They're going to be supporting uh, matrix and so on and so forth. And then platforms. Platforms are coming. Uh, we're working on them. Uh, they have really five major components, the profiles we talked about, platform runtime services, so things like SBI and UEFI and so on and so forth. Boot runtime services, so how do you actually boot up and configure things? Uh, security, and then SSC platform hardware, what's the minimum of hardware? So uh, if you, you know, think of other platforms like Intel or ARM, uh, they have things like SBSA and so on and so forth. This is a very similar thing. Um, I'm going to skip the, the, the runtime stuff, but I'll just say this year, I mean, huge list, right? So Calista gave you, you know, uh, part of it, um, but... If I can click, what's coming soon? An even huger list. And this stuff, a lot of it is coming this year. So this is very exciting. If you see something on here that you're excited about, please get involved uh, and, and work with, the, with, with uh, the, the groups. So I think I am out of time. So I'm going to say uh, uh, thank you. I have one minute. So I'm going to say thank you very much for everybody and what you do for RISC V. And again, I, I really encourage you all to get involved. Uh, and I'm excited to be here. I was here in Paris last year. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad to be here. Uh, I, I think there's a, a feeling of unity and, and community. And, um, uh, and I'm very grateful for everything that Europe does. So thank you very much.